Dear students, today we will discuss about software ownership and liability. So once the software has been made, so now whoever invented, developed that software should be given credit and that person should get money out of that product and any person should not be allowed to copy that product and resale that product on his or her own name. So one needs ownership and should get profit from the investment in terms of time and money. So such things are treated under intellectual property law. So legal efforts to provide you the ownership of the developed software and these are based on well-established principles of copyright and patent law. So what is the purpose of copyright or patent law? The purpose is that it allows the developer of a product to release that product to intended parties, the users, wherever he or she consider the uh, audience of that product is available while protecting his or her ownership rights. So that product remain the, under the ownership of that particular person. So what is the requirement? Requirement is how you can tell the people that this is your copyrighted material. So there are different things. For example, you need to include the statement in requirement specifications that these requirements have been uh, specified or constructed by the, or managed or developed by, the, uh, by that person. So you need to put a disclaimer there in the design documents, in the source code, test plans, and in visible places within the final product. So you might have seen that when you install some software or product, you can see that somewhere it is mentioned that this is a copyrighted material and the copyright is with blah, blah, blah person. So there is another term known as software license. So legal agreement, this is a legal agreement between the owner of and the user of the software product that grants a user certain permissions to use the product without transferring ownership rights to the intellectual property. And whenever we are going to install some softwares, there is a software license which comes and it says, I agree. And then you click confirm, then it is going to be installed. So you should try to read it that it says that this is a copyrighted material and you can use it in certain scenarios and under certain laws. And then there is a patent. So patent laws were established to allow the inventor to benefit commercially from an invention. So this means you are going to uh, make some invention in the world and you are going to prove that this invention is not obvious for everyone to make and I am the owner and I am the patent holder of this invention. I should be granted the patent. So you are granted a patent, but it is an expensive and time-consuming task. However, you get the right to um, um, execute that patent for a limited time, normally for 20 years. So this means in within those 20 years, if anyone claims or use that invention, he or she should take written permission from you or should pay you. So we will... I uh, have one incident in the history of when you uh, have break uh, some law. So what could be the consequences? So for example, in 2004, a little known company, NPT Incorporation, successfully won a case against Research in Motion, RMI, which is the makers of BlackBerry smartphones. So NPT has won the case and the case was that the RMI has broken the patent law, few key technologies embedded in RMI's email system. So, what were the judgments? The judgment included an injunction to suspend email services to all BlackBerry users at once and in the United States. And RMI eventually reached to an agreement to pay NPT a total of $612.5 million. So when they were asked to pay such a huge amount, so they have to avert to a shutdown. So 
If we summarize today's module, we have learned that when a software is built, that software can be protected by different means. We have learned about intellectual property law, copyright, patent, software license, and we have seen a real example that when you do not follow the law, then what can happen to you and to your company?